One of the most celebrated Zwicko lenses is this one. It's the 12 to 100 Pro lens. Uh, the focal length is 12 to 100, so in film that would be 24 through to 200. But one of its unique qualities is that over the eight and a half times zoom range, it is f4 constant aperture. It's a lens that crosses the divide between all-purpose and specialist. And in the specialist arena, I certainly use it for my landscapes. And being micro four thirds, you can do things with this lens, which you can only do in micro four thirds. Things that many people think is wrong, is unbelievable. Perhaps they are wedded too much to the automation of their own cameras and consider pixels to be more important than as to what an optic like this can produce. So let me now show you how this lens can be of enormous benefit to me in my landscape photography. Let's get going, shall we? Normally when taking pictures for YouTube production, I have to think landscape, that is 16 times nine. The default format for OM system and Olympus cameras is four times three. So I have to remember that for YouTube, I need space top and bottom that can be removed without spoiling the composition. Apart from taking it twice, which may not be possible, I prefer to start from four times three. Otherwise, I am restricting my publishing market. In fact, you could argue that the ideal format for both is square, which I used with my Hasselblad 500cm film camera. For this presentation, I am showing the photographs four times three without any cropping. I saved the RAW and performed the digital processing in Adobe Lightroom, which I regard an important part of the creative process. Throughout the program, I mostly use the EM1 Mark II, except Delkey, the Mark I, and Cusserig Stone Circle, the EM5 Mark III. A simple tip to improve the composition of a landscape shot is to have foreground interest, even if it is just a few boulders placed with the help of a JCB. It adds depth creates the third dimension that can be heightened with a path leading the viewer into the scene. You can also benefit from extra depth of field that Micro Four Thirds delivers, keeping everything that should be sharp in focus. Landscape photographers love taking pictures during the golden hour. That is an hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset but unfortunately it has become a cliché. I was at the offices of a publisher recently. In assessing a photographer's work, they want to see images taken throughout the day and in all weathers, including rain. Of course, the Zwicko 12-100 Pro lens has weather seals. You could argue that the character of a barren landscape looks more appropriate under a heavy leaden sky than a lovely blue sky, but that clump of trees on the hillside does resemble a giant caterpillar making for the top. Inappropriate, even unsightly additions to a landscape can look more dramatic under dark cloud, but for sunsets the scene is improved with a dramatic foreground or silhouette, but make sure to spot meter the sunset, as Matrix or ESP will pick up too much of the silhouette and overexpose the scene. This type of shot, dismissed in some quarters as chocolate box, is the type of image publishers often require, particularly calendars. If writing about a place in a book or magazine, they want to see the features under best light and not gloom. In this respect, I look for patterns in landscapes, especially like here, if it looks improbable. Is it another JCB job? I don't think so. 
and hope not. Unfortunately, there are small-minded people who think it will be rather fun to push it over, as has occurred elsewhere, like chopping a tree down. Fortunately, it is on the Pennine Way and 2,000 feet above sea level, so it may therefore receive some protection. This landscape would be difficult to change, even destroy. The landowner might want to change the field layout, but being located inside a national park, that might be difficult. Notice that I'm using the lens near full telephoto, which was essential for the next shot to emphasize patterns. It is not powerful enough for most wildlife shots. The 12 to 100 is a landscape lens having a generous zoom range at constant aperture. When this shot is shown on YouTube filling the 16 times 9 format, I get rid of the horizon to emphasize the sweeping contours of the downs. I like how light can affect the composition, directing our eyes around the image. Notice too that in this production I have mostly used aperture priority to control depth of field. Although Micro Four Thirds gives more depth of field than other formats, don't bank on it in program, especially if the foreground is important. Although a landscape shot may look better taken in the camera's landscape orientation, it is quite simple to rotate the camera 90 degrees if required. The orange hue is natural and not created in computer. It is caused by Saharan dust blown across France and over the English Channel by strong winds. I also felt that portrait orientation would improve the shot. It is not cropped from landscape. With the lane winding vertically into the distance and then the unexpected appearance of my actors, portrait was best. Does it look right without the trees, bottom right? Recently, I've had the option to use the OM System OM5 camera with the 12-45 Pro lens. Can't show it to you for the moment because it's recording this video, but it is a much lighter combo than, for example, the EM1 Mark II with the 12-100 Pro lens. But I can assure you that the quality with that lighter combination is absolutely superb. And that for me as a walker, and perhaps classified these days as an aging photographer, it becomes increasingly important. I'm happy to say that with the Mark II EM1 and the 12 to 100, I can still walk up a steep hill. And whilst I might occasionally pause for a panting stop, I still have sufficient energy to take a decent landscape picture, should there be one where I stop.